Hey guys, so this is uh, systems of linear equations using matrices. And I'll back up to the sort of direction box here in a second, but I need to start by showing you what an aug augmented matrix looks like. Um, so we have the system of linear equations here. And to write it as a matrix, what we do is we drop all the x's, y's, and z's, and we just worry about the coefficients. And we're going to have four columns and three rows, so one row for each equation and then one column for x, one column for y, one column for z, and one for the constants. So we have one x right here, so that would be a 1 in the first slot. Um, a 3y, so 3 for that. We don't have a z term, so that's a 0. And then we draw a line for the equals and then 5 on the other side, and this is the augmented part. Um, and then this one would be nothing in x, 6 in y, 1 in z, and then 12, and this would be 1x, nothing in y, and then minus 2 for the z term, and negative 10. So that's what I mean by an augmented matrix. So then back to the direction page. Um, so here, this is um, a couple of forms that we can get the augmented matrix into. There's something called row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. We're not going to do redu reduced row echelon form in this class. Instead, we're going to back solve to get, once we get these ones. Um, if we have something in reduced row echelon form, what this says is 1x equals this value, 1y equals that value, 1z equals that value. So essentially, this a, b, c over here, if I write it a, comma, b, comma, c, that would be like our answer to these um, systems of equations. And so it's um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get these last three zeros. So what we're going to do instead is do something called row echelon form. So we get to stop about halfway. And with this, I have this 1 equals this value here. So this is z equals this number. Once I have that, I can plug that back in and then get y. I can plug both those back in and get x. So we're going to do uh, row echelon form rather than reduce just because it's a little less work. Um, but this is the form the answer would take if we were um, like putting in a graphing calculator or a solver. Um, this is how we would see it. So uh, we have the same row operations that we had for when we did them with the variables intact a couple sections ago. We can interchange rows, we can multiply a row by a constant, and we can um, add basically two rows together to make a new row. Um, so our steps for doing these are and, and this is sort of a, a general approach. Sometimes this isn't the easiest thing to do. Um, but so this is sort of a, generally, this would be a, a good plan unless you see something better. Um, but it's a place to start from at least. And with solving these, there's definitely an experience factor where after you've done a bunch of them, you kind of get a sense as to what's going to be the easier direction to take. Um, but this at least kind of gives you something to shoot for. So uh, the first thing we want to do is make a one up in this corner. So like a 1x, and we can do that either by dividing. Um, one of the rows may have it, so we can just slip that up there. Um, and then we'll have a bunch of numbers running around here. And then we'll, in step two, we're going to use this one to knock out the x's in the next two. And um, so that's a lot like finding our, well, it's, it is finding our equations four and five, is how I described it in the, um, the earlier video. Once I have that, I need a row, uh, a one right here. So we're trying to get down to ones on the diagonals. And then I use this one to knock out that number right there. So in general, that's a pretty good plan. Um, and then once I have it down to this, you know, something z equals a number, I have z, and I can back solve. Um, again, they don't, don't always go quite that easy, um, but this is at least a starting place as to sort of how to approach them. So for this one, um, I already have a 1 up in this corner. It kind of came with it. If these equations had been swapped, if this had been 2 and this had been 1, I could just flip-flop them and make take one of these 1s and, and put them up here for x. So then um, I need to get zeros here and here. And in this case, I already have one of the zeros, so I'm going to use row 1 to knock out this 1 in row 3. So I'm going to say um, my new row 3 is going to equal the negative of my existing row 3 plus row 1. And so we use lowercase r's, and this is kind of like the 1, 2, 3's that I had in the previous video. This is a little bit more formal notation. Um, and so the, we use lowercase r's to show the operation and the capital R for what it's going to replace. So we're going to do these two things, it's going to make the new 
row three over here. So writing that out just shows some scratch work here. One, three, zero, and five. So that's my row one. And then the negative of row three would be negative one, zero, positive two, 10. And I add these together, I get a zero, three, two, and 15. So you can kind of see it makes the, it's a little bit easier to look at without all the X's, Y's, and Z's running around. It's just a little bit cleaner. So that's sort of the advantage of this version. So if I rewrite the matrix, and there's a lot of rewriting of the matrix. <laughs> so I get this, I haven't done anything to row two, so I'm just gonna write that one out. And then my new row three is zero, three, two, and 15. So now um, I have this part and I'm going to use, um, and see right here, I'm gonna kind of break my rules already. If I try to make this a one right now, I'm gonna get a fraction right here, so that, that doesn't really excite me. Um, I'm gonna use the six and the three are pretty easy to knock out at the moment, so I'm gonna use that to get this zero. And kind of what the, the big thing that we're shooting for, the ones are nice, but what's more important is these zeros down in this corner, because that means I have z equals yz equals xyz equals, and I can do the back solve. So let's go, um, my new row three is going to be, um, negative two times row three plus row two. And so that would look like um, zero, uh, negative six, and then negative two times two, negative four, and negative two times 15, so negative 30. And I'll just write row two under there. And that'd be negative 18. And let me rewrite it. Oops, that's a six. And then this is our new one of these. Oops, sorry, that's a zero. That's my negative three. And this is negative 18. Um, and then from there, I can do, um, if I'm trying to get this strictly in that form, I would do, and this is where it's kind of like, eh, I, I don't know that it's worth it for the six, but I'll do it, I'll show it anyhow. So if I do one sixth of my existing row two, that could be my new row two, and that would give me the one here. And if I do negative one third of my existing row three, that would be my new row three. So let me show what that will look like. So one, three, zero, and five. So one sixth of this, I'd have zero. One sixth of six makes that one. But then here's where it's not that great. We get a one sixth right there. One sixth of 12 would be two. And here I have zero, zero, and then negative one third times three makes the one, negative one third of 18. It's like negative 18 over negative three. So that would make positive six. So right down here now I have um, z equals six. Um, what I can do with that is then plug it into this equation. And let me write out these equations. Now I have x plus three y um, equals five. I have y um, plus one sixth z equals two and I have z equals six. So that's what this means. And now I'll just use my algebra to back solve. And really right here, I could have just done this, divided the three over and then plugged it in and solved it that way also. So I'm going to go ahead and put the six in right here. So that will be, oops, sorry. Y plus one sixth times six equals two. I can cancel those. Y plus one equals two, so that makes Y equals one. When I bring the one over. And now that I have Y and Z, I can uh, plug them into this first one, and really I only need the Y. Um, but so I can do X plus three times one equals five. So bring the three over, and X equals two. So two, one, six would be our solution. So it's fairly similar to what we did in, I think it's a 9-2 in this book, uh, the first section on linear, where we just left them with the X, Y's, and Z's intact. 
Um, but the notation is just a little bit different. And this ends up being the notation you actually use a lot when you take, if you have to take linear algebra, um, which is a 200 level class, um, this ends up being sort of the dominant way of, of solving these things. Okay, so in the second example, we don't have quite so many zeros, so we'll have to do a little bit more work. Um, so I already have the one up here, and again, if these had been written in a different order, my first thing would be to sw swap the equations. I had a one up in this corner. And I'm going to use this one to knock out the two and the five. So I'm going to do um, a new row two. I'm going to go negative two times the existing row one and add to that row two. So that's going to look like uh, negative two, two, negative two, and eight. So negative two, positive two, negative two, and eight. And I'll just copy down this row. <coughs> and add those, so then I get my zero, negative one, two, and that would be negative seven. And at the same step, I'm going to um, since I'm using it's operating on two different rows, I can do it all at once. So I'll make a new row three. So I'm going to go negative five times row one, and then add that to row. Oops, three. So that'll look like negative five, five, negative five, and then negative five times four for twenty. And then copying this one down. And so let's see, we get our 0, 6, negative 7, and 32. So we kind of reorganize that right here. So the first row didn't change. Second row is now 0, negative 1, 2, negative 7, and 0, 6, negative 7, and 32. And so then the next thing I need is a, um, I could make this a positive one. I think I'll do that in a second. Uh, I'm going to use this negative right here to knock out that six. So then my new row three, I'm going to get from going six times existing row two, negative six, positive six. And then add row three to that. So that would be zero, negative six, and then 12, and negative 42. And then I'll add this row to it. So 0, 0, this would be 5, and then this would be um, negative 10. And so now, ideally, I want a 1 here and a 1 here. Um, so I'll just kind of start that up here. So I'm going to go negative 1 times row 2 to make my new row 2. And I'm going to go um, 1 fifth of row 3 to make my new row 3. So then down here, I'll just copy down the first one. And then negative 1 will just flip all these signs. So I'll have 0, 1, negative 2, and 7. And then one fifth of this one would be zero, zero, one, negative two. And so now I know that um, z, one z equals negative two. Once I have that, I can back solve into the second equation. So that's y minus two z, but z is now negative two equals uh, positive seven. So y plus four equals seven, or y equals three. And then plugging those into the first row, I have x, y would be minus 3, z would be minus 2, equals negative 4. And so that's x minus 5 equals negative 4, and adding that, x equals 1. So solution's going to be 1, 3, and negative 2. Okay, and this last one, so again, we have a 1 up here already. So I'm going to use this one to knock out the 2 and the 1. So I'm going to go, um, let's go 2 times row 2, I'm sorry, row 1, plus row 2 to make my new row 2. So 2 times this, so 2, negative 4, 6, and 2, and then add this one to it. So those drop out, negative 1, 
I get a two there and a four. And then I'll do um, the negative of row one. And I'll add to that um, row three and that will knock out this one. So um, negating that one, I get negative one, positive two, negative three, negative one, and one, negative three, five, ten. So those cancel, this becomes negative one, and let's see, that would be a two and a nine. So then we kind of write that up here. So I have one, negative two, three, one, and then my new row two, my new row three. And then you can kind of see what's going to happen here. These are coming out the same. So if I do um, negative times row two plus row three, these are going to drop out. So this will be zero, one, negative two, negative four, and zero, negative one, two, and nine. So I end up with zero, 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 and five. And so what this means is 0x's, 0y's, and 0z's make 5. And that can't actually happen because you'd have to have something over here. So this is what they would look like if they were inconsistent. So that's that no solution version. Um, a dependent system would come out all zeros on the bottom row. Um, I'll do another example with just that. Um, but So that's kind of how they'll look for the two exception cases. Cool, and that wraps up uh, 9.6.